Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to compare a Chinese made vise to a US made vise. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. Today we're actually upstairs instead of in the shop. We're in the garage. I put up a background, set up some lights because, well, it's, it's kind of ugly back there. And I didn't think you want to see the mess of what the shop really looks like. Um, I want to work on the Ultimate Metrology Center, and I haven't made it down into the basement due to complications. I'd say it's big, it's heavy, and... Um, I don't know. We'll just have to see if I can ever get it down in the basement. But with that being said, today's video, we're going to talk about this Enco Chinese made vise, and we are going to compare it to the Wynn Speedlock vise. Steve Wynn contacted me a while back and said, Dale, I love your channel. I want to send you one of my vices. So went online, looked at the vise, and went, wow, this is not your normal vise he added something to it. I'm going to do a complete review on this vise later, but for now, I'm just going to give you a little teaser. What makes this vise so unique is the way the jaws attach to the system. No longer do you have to take the bolts and get them out. Now, you just loosen them up a little bit and take the jaws out. It's that simple. They go back in just as easy and you tighten them up. Now 90% or 95% of the work I do on my milling machine is the work holding is done with one of these vices. It is such a foundational tool. It's something you don't want to be cheap on. And that's why I want to compare to this. I want to see if this $200 vice will compare to this vice. It's going to be a fun exercise. This old Tony did a similar comparison. He did it on a four inch. It specked out really good. Another channel to look at is Stefan Goswinter. He's got an amazing, amazing channel. If you haven't seen it, there's going to be a link below of how he looked at these vices. Now, I got to warn you guys, he's German, okay? That's a good thing because he looks at machining in such a detailed fashion, and you can learn so much from him and the knowledge that he has collected. I think it's important to talk about the general different designs of vices so you can understand why these milling machine vices are built the way they are. The first standard vice you come across is like this Hardinge. And being a Hardinge, it's a great vice. It has a big weakness. Is The screw itself is on the top. So if you think about this base, and the base is the center line, when you tighten up this jaw, it's going to push and bend this bed, and that's a problem. Now what they've done to help compensate for it is they've put a long jaw on it, and they've actually, I don't know if you can't see it on this one, is there is gibbs on here to help control the, the distortion that's going on. But the problem is it wants to bend the bed, and that's a real problem. Here's another great vise. These are what's called a screwless vise. And they kind of compensate for that because of the way the jaw, when it screws down and gets tightened, it actually pushes the jaw down to the bed, keeps the bed from warping. Really a great design. You don't normally see this design on milling machines. You usually see them on surface grinders because there's a great advantage to it is this design on a surface grinder, when you set it down and you torque your part into place for holding, the bed doesn't bend and you're not relying on the clamping pressure of the magnet to keep it straight. Where when you're looking at these, you're, you improve the strength when it is actually clamped to your table. Now let's look at the normal, what I would call the normal milling machine vise. Now, there are some that have the screw above it, and anybody that owns one will tell you how much they hate it. This design here, what makes it great is the way the clamping works. First of all, the screw is below the bed, so when 
it's clamping, instead of pushing back on the bed, it actually wants to straighten it out the other way. So when it's pressing against the jaws, it helps keep everything in alignment. Next, what it does is, because of this hook and this little ball, it actually hooks this vise, and as it clamps, it pulls it down into position, helping it hold it tighter to the bed. The third thing that makes these vices great is this surface on the top of the vise and under here are both milled. So when you clamp down the vise, the top jaw wants to clamp to this. The screw actually comes up, clamps them both together, and makes this a more stable unit. Let's talk about the handles that came with them. Here is the Chinese made one, chrome plated, looks really nice. I don't know if you can see the pin in here very well. The pin in here is pretty small in comparison to this. I do know in my previous experience that these type of chrome plated casted tools don't last very long. I can already see that this end here is showing a lot of wear. It's kind of strange because this is basically a new handle. It's been used very little. It does seem to go on easily goes on both of them, seems to be a little sloppy. So I, I worry about this handle. Here is the one from the wind vise. Look at how much bigger the pin is. It goes all the way through. You're not going to shear this off. This is milled out of solid stock. A lot heavier. Slides on really nice. The other thing is I'm looking here is the finish on these two. This is really smooth. That's a time saver. Over here, it doesn't fit. The reason it doesn't fit is it's metric. So any handles you're going to buy in the future probably aren't going to fit this. Now I did a video on different types of handles and I'll put a link down below of the different handles that I like to use on my vise and I would be very disappointed if I bought this vise and the handles wouldn't fit. The handles, you know, this one looks great but I think in long term it's not going to last that long because the other thing is you guys know um, we do take hammers to these uh, handles every once in a while. I know you're not supposed to, but you still do, just admit it. First step for us to do when we analyze these is, let's look at the fit and finish. You look at the casting, look at how nice the casting is in here. It's been finished. Over here, it's very rough. The paint job is inconsistent. We have to give quality, just the overall first look at it. Definitely goes to the win, American Vice. Vices, I know, weigh a lot. This one weighs 74 pounds. This one weighs, I think, 62. So there's about a 12-pound difference. But because it weighs a lot doesn't mean that it's not delicate. One of the surfaces you need to look at on a vise is, of course, the bottom. And what condition it is in. Look at how this has been milled out where it needs to be milled out. Looks really nice. This one here, rough casting, no milling done. There's a place for keyways here and here. These, I think, are milled out. If they are, they're not milled out very well. I wouldn't expect them to be very accurate. The bottom, I can feel, I can feel that mill mark right there. Oh, that's just nice, really nice. Another thing you want to do before you ever put a vise onto your machine is, let me grab some. I have a set of precision flat stones. And I'm just going to run it over here. See how it feels? Nice. I actually see there's a little high spot here. Probably what happened is somebody wasn't being careful with it and probably set it down a little hard here. And that's why you want to stone the bottom of these Yeah, I can feel the inconsistencies right there. The bottom of the Chinese just really doesn't uh, make it. So strike two for that one. Now, like I said, this one has been used before. I can see, you can see where it's been on the milling machine right here, but it really doesn't affect it over a long period of time. Really, really nice. So let's look at the jaws here. 
they're about the same. <clears throat> Next I want to talk about, now like I said, this one weighs 12 pounds more than this one, so that means there is a lot more cast into it. Let's see here, a little over two inches. Quite a ways under, that's almost a quarter inch smaller. So definitely a lot heavier bed. And again, that's gonna give it the rigidity when you clamp it down. Here's something I've noticed that, so on the wind vise, one of the big advantages is you can change out the jaws. The other big advantage is they just take standard jaws because there's several other manufacturers that make interchangeable jaws that are quick change. But they have their own proprietary jaw sets and they cost a lot more. Here I can take any jaws that I have presently, bolt it onto here. I'm looking at this, I see these bolt hole patterns width wise They're about the same, but what I'm seeing is height-wise, it's a little bit different. This one here will not take my normal jaws. So if you already have a vise, the parts to it are not going to be interchangeable with here. Another big drawback. Let's take an overall measurement to see what we're looking at size-wise. This one is 17 inches long. This one is 16 and a quarter, so pretty comparable. Width-wise, nine, nine. Jaw width, now these are classified as a six inch jaw. So the width here is six inches. Six inches, a little shy. But one of the other big changes is <clears throat> this one here opens up to six inches. This one here, this is what I'm, this is what I'm really excited about this vise is it opens up over eight inches. What that allows me to do is, of course, put larger parts in it. Not just larger parts between here, but remember, I can take these jaws, put them on the outside, and have even more capacity. What I'm also excited is I can use thicker jaws here with a lot more aggressive profiles than I could with a normal vise, so I can get pretty wide, but still keep in that family of that six inch range. Very excited about that. Next, we're going to take these back jaws off. We're going to measure how flat these beds are. You need to have these beds flat if you expect to do quality work. We'll first start out with the wind vise. This is where I need to take it off the covering. I really, really protect and cherish this tabletop. We're going to make sure that the bed is parallel and also flat all the way across. So we're actually after a very consistent measurement. Let me uh, zero this out. Okay, this indicator, every mark on here is a ten thousandths of an inch. So we have a fluctuation of about 10 thousandths of an inch. That is amazing. You think about how long this is, what is that, about 12, maybe 14 inches right there. To be at 10 thousandths of an inch is excellent. Now let's see how the uh, Chinese version does. One of the critical things about any vise is that the height here is consistent with all your other vices. Now my other vices I have, I have two other vices, they are Kurt vices and the top measurement, the top measurement of this rail is 1.875 if I, my memory serves me correctly. This one is correct, this one is not. So you can't gang one of these import vices in with any of your other vices. So again, another disadvantage so this one here actually runs in a little bit higher than another vise, like a Kurt or this wind vise. A 
Wow. Just right in this area here. Let's see if I can't get a better reading. If I can't get a better zero. I'm going to zero out to here. Okay. So I moved in on the jaw. We're off about a half a thousandth. Coming to the other end. So we are two and a half thousandths. On this end here, we have no consistency on the, on the grind. Let's go to the other side. This side here is three and a half thousandths. Got some, at least it's consistent here. It's consistent in this area. And it's zero here. So this corner and this corner are the same height. So the bed is twisted. Let's go back to here, see if our zero is still our zero. Yep, there we go. So this bed is ground horribly. It would have to be completely redone. But remember how the bottom looked. The bottom, you could actually feel the mill mark. It is not set up very well. This vise here, again, wins the category of being parallel. So what we want to do now is check to see if this is perpendicular. I've got a square here that I trust. I see no air gaps. I see no air gaps. I could set this up to measure it, but I think that's good enough. I'm going to put the jaw back on. Okay, it's, it's parallel or it's perpendicular here. Now, it's a little off. It's a little off. Now, it's off actually in a good direction. A lot of these vices, this front jaw will actually tilt forward just a little bit. So when you do clamp it, it kind of counteracts and levels it out. So this is actually set up fairly well for that. Well. Yeah. So it's got about a thousandths tilt. Let me check this side again. This side here is perpendicular. Let's see how the wind checks out. No gap whatsoever. Very nice. Back jaw, rock solid, really nice. Next test is we're going to clamp something in the vise and actually measure to see how much the jaws move during the clamping process. What I've got here is I've got a couple parallels and a one, two, three block, and we're gonna set that in. Now, I would say most of the time, using my vise, I have the block of material above the vise, and that's so I don't actually cut in to any of the jaws, but I'm gonna run it a little low here. I need to do that. So I can actually get my probe on this face to read it. Something else I'm doing is I'm putting the test indicator right in the center of the vise, right where the block of material is, just to try to take away any errors. So let's put some pressure on this. One of the disadvantages this vise has is a really great bearing system in here. So in other words, I'm going to probably be able to torque this a lot more than I will that vise. Okay, we're just a little over a thousand. So remember, this is a tenth indicator. That is really, really great. Let's now test the front jaw and see if there's any lift to it. Okay, that I would say is holding rock solid. Let's try the back jaw, see what happens. This is the one I'm expecting to have some trouble with. It's more in the center of the vise, therefore has more potential to bow. Also, this one is not mounted to the base, so it could lift up a bit. So about a half a thousandth, that is really great, because you think about it, if this jaw lifts up, that's going to kink your part out. So if we're within a half a thousandth, I'm not going to complain. Let's try 
the import and see what happens. Okay. Let's put some torque on it. Oh. 4,000. This vice jaw moves 4,000 seven inch. That is not good. You think about your part is going to move out of alignment by four thousandths every time you clamp into it. You're going to become a very frustrated machinist trying to use this vise to do anything that is accurate. Let's see how much the jaw lifts up on us. Okay, about a half a thousandths. Not horrible, but not ideal by any means. Now we're going to check the back jaw, see how much lift is on it. So about two and a half thousandths lift. That means your part is going to be out. Now again, this would be an interesting test to see if I can get more rigidity on the milling machine. I would love to show you that test, but right now my milling machine is in pieces. It's being scraped in, so we're not going to get to see that. That concludes our testing of this. It's simple to see that the wind speed lock vise definitely kicked backside of this uh, Chinese version of this vise. I'd have to say this is not a good way to go. Even in a pinch I would be scared to buy one of these things because it's going to take so much work to make it uh, actually function. You're always going to have to be pounding your parts down. You're going to find just a lot of frustration, especially as a beginner. You're going to blame it on your skill level when really at this time if you're having problems and you have a vice like this, blame it on the vice, not you. Now if you have a really nice vice like this win or a Kurt or something similar of this value and the parts aren't coming out square, well you're going to have to blame it on yourself. I hope you guys like this video. Um, I love doing it. It's great to see what your equipment can and can't do where you can avoid its weaknesses and work towards its strengths. Let me know what you think about this vise. I think it's a winner. The Chinese version, what I would have to do to get this vise to work, I would have to regrind the whole thing, but at the end of the day it weighs 12 pounds less than this and it's not going to ever be a vise like this. So that's kind of my warning. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give me some thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Is Stefan Godwin. It's Steph Stefan Godwin. Another channel to look at is Stefan Godwin. And he's another channel to look at is Stefan Goswinter. Yeah.